Well, hello YouTube. This is RPG Map Maker, and I'd like to begin a new set of video tutorials on fantasy cartography using Adobe Photoshop. Uh, and as usual, even though it's been a long time since I posted a video, I'd like to put a good word in for all of the guys and gals out at the Cartographers Guild. Uh, it's a great forum that uh, really is a a friendly environment where you can get your questions answered and learn a whole lot of great tips and tricks of the trade when it comes to making maps and uh, the people there have always been very helpful and professional about everything that they've done and they tend to have a good time too so uh, let's get started um, I'd kinda like to break down just uh, how I make trees in this episode I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of video editing or anything like that, so uh, you'll just get it raw, sort of see my workflow, and uh, we'll just kind of move on from there. Uh, let's make a tree that's your basic RPG map tree, just a nice round sort of tree with a little bit of shading on one side, and this will be your really just down and dirty ugly kind of tree. Like no real art, artsiness to it. Because uh, I found that as long as you have a fairly consistent style you can get away with quite a bit when it comes to uh, making icons uh, that are usable on a map. And uh, the fact that it's the general tree shape is pretty much uh, what gives it away. And uh, you want to just uh, rough in the shading. It's pretty much the thing that will show up once we uh, we actually put this thing onto the map and, and use it. So don't worry about uh, the fact that it doesn't necessarily look that great in this form. Because what we're going to do is we're going to drag it into our actual map. And then we're going to resize it to be a lot smaller. We're going to say maybe 20% of its original size all around. And what you're left with is kind of a an icon size element. And I think that uh, the resizing has kind of made that edge kind of dumpy over here. And you do have to watch for that occasionally. Yeah. But easily fixed with just a little... Uh, couple of strokes of the pen. Eh, maybe not. Let's try uh, fixing it in the larger version. And then resize it. See how that looks. Like I said, you know, this is live and raw so it may not be uh, perfect. There we go. That's a little better. So tree number one. And uh, one of the tips I have for you is to make it basically like a PNG uh, importable graphic that you probably could get out of, you know, like a fantasy map program that had icon sets that you can just drag and drop in place at the click of a mouse because that's a great workflow and that's what those programs do but in this case we're drawing those map elements ourselves. so now that it's merged the white layer behind actually creates the ability for you to drag multiple copies uh, from background to foreground to make the clusters of trees fairly easily you can kind of just throw them down. Like I said, m mostly working from background to foreground so that you don't have the, any overlap problems. And I think I'm probably going to merge this down and resize it one more time. Because I still think that's a little large. And you can still kind of see that they're not very elegant. <laughs> so we'll go with height, about 50% of that. And maybe a width of 80. And that's also going to make them a little 
or ball looking, which again you could do by resizing this to taste prior to dragging it in. Because I think that's probably just a, a nicer, rounder shape because it didn't turn it out to be the kind of tall tree that I wanted. But now they look just fine in my opinion. And if you set the transfer mode to multiply, they're going to go back to being sort of that just hand-drawn, darker look. And they're now placeable on your map wherever you want them to be. And uh, if you grab out a single element, you can go back to making lots of multiple copies, however you want. And I generally save, you know, one of those symbols just kind of off to the side in like a, a master set of icons with the uh, that are just turned off, and I'll just keep dragging them into that that folder, and I can keep checking to see as I build a list of things for this map that I can then continuously use throughout the entirety of the map. Uh, I already did a couple of trees, yeah, like an apple kind of tree. We'll just drag that in and show you how that uh, there we go show you how that plays out resize to same thing about 20 and 20 just to get it down to close and then we'll go with that uh, 50 80 like I did before Let's see how that looks now, of course, every tree is going to be different, so let's undo that and not do the uh, <laughs> the extra squishing. So we'll do 80-80. Maybe 60-60. Yeah, there we go. Because you want your, your trees, even though they're different styles, to be fairly consistent across the map. So this one has less shading than this one which could be a problem stylistically speaking but uh, let's try and fix that just darkening this up a little bit there that's not too bad and so one forest might contain you know frillier bumpier trees and one might be it just depends on the style that you're going for. Of course, more common is to have different types of real trees. So you got your your ferns and your conifers and and all that kind of thing. Whoa, 2020. using 80 wasn't I there we go and so that gives you you know two different trees maybe that stylistically work together that's kind of why I pre-drew those because I was thinking through this a little bit uh, but making icons is pretty much that simple you just sit here and you draw something and then resize it to taste and figure out what you want to do so let's try one more live just for the sake of argument, uh, let's try a dead tree. Something that, uh, you know, long ago was all gnarly and, and, and fun looking. So we got some, you know, stylistically speaking. <laughs> I like saying stylistically speaking. It's going to be your, your swamp sort of dead or dark forest sort of a tree that you know your characters don't want to uh, ever be involved in going in because they're not likely to survive said encounter with the dark forest <coughs> excuse me and again you know the art of drawing these is you know not very time consuming 
in the sense that you can just sort of throw something down, shade one side of everything, maybe throw a little bit of color on, you know, the other side, and you're pretty much done. And that gives you the ability to go, oh, you know, I really don't like that one, and you don't feel like you've spent hours and hours and hours on something that then you have you know, have to throw away and go, oh, that's not usable. Like these trees, you know, they're not stylistically speaking. <laughs> there I went again. Um, something that will work with these style trees. So I'm pretty much not going to use those in any project. Unless I, you know, make something that is more important. Here's a who. Yeah, well, 88. No, 2020 first. Yeah. And that got me pretty close because I think I drew this one a little smaller than in those other trees, so we'll, we'll change the height a little bit. Maybe another 90, 80. Yeah, there we go. And so now you got your, your dead tree and your apple tree and your sort of, you know, fern sort of tree. And so now we've got three icons that as we build out a map, give us different regions, different feels for, you know, your different locations as you plan out where things should go. And that's pretty much how I design all of the elements uh, for our map. Like I said, this is just trees, but uh, after trees, you know, a future video will be on, you know, mountains and hills and, you know, grass and you know, different elements to make up a, a whole fantasy map that we'll, we'll build together. But uh, until then, this is RPG Map Maker, and happy mapping!